Hello and welcome back to the studio and today of course we're looking at this Bob Ross Liquid Clear. I started using this product ooh, many years ago when I started doing my teacher training and since then I've shown many people how to use it properly. So here's my chance to show you how to use it on a canvas, not quite, and just right. I'll be showing you how to test your canvas, how much paint you can apply on top of it and how much trouble you can get yourself into if you do too much or too little. So sit back and enjoy my little demonstration. So here's my can of liquid clear, but I much prefer to use it for one of these little plastic airtight pots. I'll be using Bob Ross one inch brushes and I'll be using a fan brush. On the just right side, I scrub on a very thin, even coat. On the not quite side, I put on a little bit extra, but essentially they look very similar. But are they? Let's test our canvases. I'm going to use my shaky hand cam for this one. So just right first, I take my finger and press firmly and just skate across the surface. And as you can see, there's a slight trace, but look at this. That's much too wet. That'll get us into trouble. As you can see, a little trail of my finger stays visible. Whereas this side, it disappears. I've got some Bob Ross landscape paint so we can test our canvas. I'll put some on a palette. Here we are, titanium white, phthalo blue, ozone crimson, and phthalo green. These colors are transparent. I apply a good amount of blue to both corners, a good amount of crimson through the centers, and finally, some phthalo green in the bottom left corners of each section. Next, I add a nice streak of titanium white. I'll use a fan brush and I'll apply a generous amount through the centers of each of the panels. And I dab it on as though I were going to paint an aurora or northern lights. Now let's have some fun. I'll use a nice clean dry one inch brush and a piece of paper towel. I'm going to just drag this paint up and down, wiping off excess paint if I need to. And as you can see, I get strong blue color that doesn't want to drag too far. I get a nice lavender color with the blue and the crimson mixed and finally a nice green. But as you can see, my color stays strong and bright. Let's try that again with the not quite side, a fresh brush and paper towel. And again, firm pressure. This side, you can see the paint wants to really slide and move very easily. But the color seems diluted and not as rich and bright. And also the paint doesn't seem to want to hold its shape. It's much more smudgy looking. I daren't go over it more than once or twice. It just turn into a fog. So what happens if you don't put on enough liquid clear? Well, I did another little test canvas for us. On this canvas, I applied hardly any liquid clear, but the same amount of color. Another fresh brush, and of course the same firm pressure, up and down strokes. This time you see, the color doesn't want to move at all. It just stays stuck. So now you can see how useful liquid clear is in blending and manipulating our colors. But you only need a thin, even coat. Now let's try painting on a primed canvas. I'm gonna put a, a gesso tree on here, just a, an outline or a shape, and then we'll put liquid clear over the top. I'll let these shapes dry completely before applying liquid clear. Here are my trees. I'll check them, make sure they're completely dry. This side is going to be the just right amount, a thin even coat, and the not quite side, I'll put a little bit more on. I'll just use the same old one inch brush and Bob Ross liquid clear. I'll scrub a very thin even coat on the just right side and a little more on the not quite side. Unlike a black canvas, this isn't quite so easy to see a trail. So you have to rely on your touch. On the just right side, you want just a very small amount on the tips of your fingers. On the not quite side, you'll feel it's much too oily. For my test, I'm going to be using some Prussian blue. I want to create a soft pastel sky behind my trees. So I'm taking just a very small amount 
on a Bob Ross one inch brush. Prussian blue is quite a transparent colour, so I can just glaze my painting and still see my tree. If you enjoy watching my videos, don't forget to like, subscribe and share this with your friends and family on social media. Thank you. I'll let this sit for a while and then we'll come back and check our canvases. On my not quiet side, you can see the paint is still quite runny and it's pooled in the grain of the canvas. The actual weave has actually got little puddles of blue. Here's a close up of the not quite canvas. You can even see where the paint has started to run through the weave down on the bottom of the canvas. Whereas on the right, the paint has settled more evenly. 24 hours later, I tested my canvases again. And sure enough, the not quite side is still just as runny and not working at all well. So there you are. Now you know how to use Bob Ross Liquid Clear. But don't move. There's another painting coming along where I use this to prepare my canvas. Happy painting, people.